Hey guys, and welcome back to another weekly programming problem. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a more advanced problem. So if you had done the previous problems and you found them maybe too easy or just the right difficulty, this is a really good one to try. Um, it's a little bit more challenging, although it's not too difficult. And again, I'm going to be going through a full explanation here on how to solve this problem. And personally, I really like this problem, so that's why I'm doing it today. Now, full disclosure, I did not make this problem. It's actually from uh, the University of Waterloo. So they actually have a competition that they run all throughout Ontario, uh, which is called the CCC, so the Canadian Computing Competition. So actually throughout Canada, sorry. Um, so anyone in Canada pretty much is allowed to enter and it gives you a set of five problems increasing in difficulty and you're able to solve them. So this one is the third problem in that set. And typically the third ones are about an intermediate level. So this one is about that level. And I really like this one because it shows that if you can figure out what the question's asking and kind of understand the problem, that's not too difficult to actually solve it. So let's go ahead and read through this one right now. So the name of the problem is called the Geneva Confection. And pretty much, I'll just go ahead and read it. In order to ensure peace and prosperity for future generations, the United Nations is creating the world's largest candy. Uh, the ingredients must be taken in railway cars from the top of a mountain and poured into Lake Geneva. The railway system goes steeply from the mountaintop down to the lake with a T-shaped branch in the middle as shown below. So you can see we have a mountain, branch, and lake. And the reason I really like these problems as well is because they give you some good visuals and allow and give you really good examples as well explaining the problem. Um, so it's easy to understand rather than me trying to write one like this. Uh, so right now, each of the N ingredients is in their own railway car. Each railway car is assigned a positive integer from 1 to N. The ingredients must be poured into the lake in order 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, but the railway cars are lined up in some random order. The difficulty is that because of the especially high gravity today, you can only move cars downhill to the lake or sideways onto the branch. Uh, is it still possible to pour the ingredients into the lake uh, in this specified order? Otherwise, uh, is it not possible, right? So I've kind of skipped through a bit of it just because I've already read the problem a bunch of times, but pretty much what it's asking is you're gonna have a list of ingredients here, two, three, one, four, for example, and they're gonna be labeled uh, one to N. So N could be any number, that's how many ingredients are in the branch uh, or are on the mountain, sorry. And you wanna get the ingredients starting at one into the lake in order, and you're able to use this branch on the side here. So this goes through how you would solve this very simple case of four different ingredients. Um, so say we want to get one in first, but four is in the way. So the first step, it says here, slide car four out to the branch. We would slide four to the branch, it stays on the branch now. We now have one, nothing blocking it. One's able to go into the lake. Now we check the mountaintop. We say, well, is three able to go in the lake? No, we need two first. So we slide three onto the branch, two goes into the lake. And then there's nothing left on the mountaintop, so we then slide three from the branch and four from the branch into the lake, and we get them in the right order. Now I know I went really fast. I'm going to explain another simpler case. I'm actually going to use paint and just show you the exact order of what you need to do so that you can understand it. The input is down here, so the first line will contain the number of test cases um, that will be run. So this is a little bit different than some of the other uh, uh, problems we did as they were a little bit easier. And this is where you'll start to see that actually getting the input for some of these problems can be a little bit challenging and might actually take you a few minutes to figure out. So this one, um, since the problem is somewhat simple, I would say for this kind of level of problem is asking you to do multiple test cases at once. So it'll give you like three sets of ingredients that will be at the amount at the top of the mountain or five sets of ingredients at the top of the mountain and your program will have to determine the answer to all of them so whether they can go into the lake or if they're not able to go into the lake and so on so it says here the input each test case has the form of an integer n on the first line which tells you how many cars are going to be um, lined up from top to bottom and then the cars will always use the numbers from one to n in some random order so it'll then give you the order again from top to bottom so the first number that you're going to see in your input which would be this one here after the test case uh, is two so actually sorry i'll just go through the input here quickly um so the first line here we have is our is the amount of test cases so it says two test cases then we see that the next uh next line is going to be the number of what do you call it i want to say elements or ingredients in our first test case so it says we have two test cases in the first test case there's four ingredients so we have two three one four 
that's the number, uh, the order of all those ingredients. Then we go down a line, so say now we're on test case two. This one has four ingredients as well, and that's four, one, three, two. And I hope that makes sense for you guys. And then the output is yes and no, because for, there's two test cases, so we need two different outputs on two separate lines. All right, so you can obviously tell this one's a little bit more complicated, but now I'm just gonna go into paint and I'm gonna explain it and hopefully we can understand um, how this problem works. So I've just used a really simple case here of one, two, three lined up um, just to show you kind of how this works. So first, and the first process that we're gonna do when we wanna solve this problem is take it down to the simplest case. And this is what we wanna do for a lot of programming problems is we wanna solve a really simple case to figure out the steps that we need to take to do that and then we can scale it up for a larger case because a lot of these problems, if you can figure out how to solve a really simple case, it's going to be the same for a larger case, just those steps repeated over and over. And that's the same for this problem. So our first step, and this is at the very beginning, is we're just going to look at the top of our mountain. So this is my little branch here. I know this is a crude kind of sketch and paint, but uh, just play along. So we see that we have three. Now the ingredient that we need to go into the lake is one because we're starting and we need one to go in. So is three one? No, it's not. So the first step, and this is always what we're gonna do at the very beginning, is we're gonna say, well, there's nothing on the branch, so the only thing we can do, if this is not one, is move it over to the branch. So we have three, we take it, and we move it to the branch over there. So then what I can do from here is I can get rid of three, get rid of this little arrow, painfully, and then we can go ahead and we can check the top of the mountain again. So now that we have three on the branch, um, we check the top of the mountain, we say, well, we need the ingredient one to go into the mountain uh, is two one. No, it's not. So all we can do there is we can go ahead and we take two, can plop it over to the branch over here. So we take two and we write two there. And then we erase two from here and we continue on with that process. So now we do the same thing. We say, well, we need one to go into the lake. Well, here we are at the top of the mountain, one is here. So we can go ahead, we can take one and we can shoot it down into the lake over here. So one's down there. Now, uh, if there was any other elements on the top of the mountain, so say we had, for example, four, we would we would get in check, we'd say, well, is four. Uh, so now we're on element two, we need element two to go into the lake. Is four two? No, it's not. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check the branch. So I check the branch, I see two is here, it's on the branch. So I go ahead, I take two, I erase it from the branch and I put it into the lake. So then I go here, now two is in the lake. All right, same thing, we check the top of the mountain again. We say, okay, is we need the third ingredient to go in. Well, is four, three? No, it's not. So we're gonna leave that there. We check the branch, we say, is, th is three, three? Oh yes it is, so then we erase three. All right, we take three and we put it into the lake. And then we repeat the process. We check the top of the mountain. We say, well, is four, four? Yes, it is. It goes into the lake. Now we have nothing left on the branch, nothing left at the top of the mountain. So there we go. We know that we can complete the recipe. All right, so now I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna add a few things here to make it a little bit more complex. So this is the case uh, where you're not gonna be able to complete the recipe that I'm about to show. So the one that we just have is fine, obviously four, is able to go into the mountain. So what will happen, for example, if we can't complete the recipe, recipes will have something along the lines of, I wanna say this, six, four, and then I'm gonna write three, I'm gonna just gonna move it back up to the top of the mountain just so that it uh, we can use this case here, all right. So four, this is my four by the way, I know it's really bad, just, just pretend that's a four. All right, so we check the top of the mountain like our regular process. We say, well, it's three, three. Yes, it is. Okay, we move it in. And now there's nothing at the top of the mountain, right? So now that there's nothing at the top of the mountain, we have to check the branch. So since we were gonna check the mountain again, we check, there's nothing there. We check the branch and we see a six. Now is six equal to four? No, it's not. So we can't complete the recipe because there's no way for six to go back up to the top of the mountain. There's no way to four, for four to go in before six. And that's the case in which the recipe cannot be uh, completed, where there's nothing at the top of the mountain and the number at the edge of the branch is not able to go into the lake. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm gonna go into the code um, and talk about that a bit more in detail. 
So you guys can see here, this is my code. Um, I'll just scroll through it really quickly. It's a bit longer than some of the other code and I've really annotated it. So I've really written a lot so that you guys can understand how this works. So if you feel like it, you can go ahead and read this, but I've pretty much just explained this little paragraph already. Um, so I start off by grabbing the input. Now the input, we have test cases, uh, it's just equal to in, int input. So our very first line, really simple. I'm just figuring out how many test cases we're gonna have. Now I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna find all of the ingredients for all of these test cases, uh, the amount of test cases that we have, so that amount of times. So do a quick for loop, and then I say, I'm going to create a list up here. So I have a list and every time that there's a new test case, I'm going to add another uh, layer to the list. So another dimension. So there we are. I add the dimension and then I grab how many elements are going to be in this next uh, list or in this next set of ingredients, because that's going to be the next line, right? So I have F equals input and I say four Y in range, just converting this to an integer here of however many elements are going to be in that uh, or ingredients are going to be in that next list. I, and then in the appropriate list, I'm going to append all of those ingredients into them like so. Okay, so that now that we've done that, we've grabbed and we've pretty much if we had, for example, two test cases, and they looked like this, so it looked like two, three, five, mm -hmm. for example, and then we had, or I guess it has to be uh, two, three, two, one, three, and then we had like one, two, three, four, for example, then they would go in accordingly like this. Um, and that's what our list will look like. Now I'm just going to delete those. So it doesn't mess up my program when I eventually decide to run it. Okay. So now I'm just creating a little for loop. And for each test case, I'm going to repeat that process that I talked about when I was showing you in paint. Um, so I'm going to run through that same process in code that I just ran through in paint. So we're going to say car list, is equal to list X. Um, this is, I'm just creating a new, I don't know why that popped up, just creating a new uh, list to store the current test case that I'm checking. So I'm just calling it car list. I didn't need to do that, um, but it's just something I like to do. Uh, so we need to store the location of the cars in the mountain, the branch and the car that we are looking for. So then I have a new list, I call it branch, and this is gonna be my list for what's on the mountain. Current, this is the ingredient that I'm currently looking for. So the one that I want to get to go into the lake. So our first step, if cars are on the mountain, try to send them into the lake. That should say lake, okay, into the lake. So if the length of car list is greater than zero, which on our first run it always will be, then I'm gonna say if the car on the mountain, so at the end of our list uh, is the one we're looking for, send it into the lake and remove it from the list. So by doing that, I'm gonna add one to our current because now we're gonna be looking for two and then I'm gonna pop um, that car from the list. So popping just means removing from the end. Cause remember when we grab, we get from top to bottom. Um, so that's why I'm looking at the end of the list is by putting a negative one there. Okay. So now if that's not true, the list at the bottom of the mountain uh, or the ingredient at the bottom of the mountain is not the one we're looking for. We're going to look, uh, at the branch. So we're going to see, is there any cars on the branch? Um, if there's no cars on the branch, so then we're going to go and we're going to do the next step. But if there are cars on the branch, we're going to look at the last car on the branch and we're going to say if it equal is equal to the current um, ingredient that we're looking for, we're going to add one to the current and we're just going to remove it from the branch. There's no point in storing which ones we already put into the lake because that doesn't matter if we have this current variable already. Okay, so now that we've looked at uh, the branch and we've looked at the mountain and we've said, well, the one on the top of the mountain can't go in, the one on the top of the branch can't go in we need to move the one from the mountain to the branch. So we're gonna try that. That's the only possible thing we can do right now is move the one from the mountain to the branch. So we go ahead and we do that. So we say branch.append carList.pop. Now in Python, this dot pop actually, uh, a lot of people just use it to remove something from a list, but it actually returns the element that you're removing. Um, so it's really useful to use by just putting it in here. And there we are. Now, otherwise, what we say here, is we've checked, we say, well, there's nothing on the branch and the top of the mountain. Well, that doesn't, uh, the, that's not the one we're looking for. Then again, we would, re we would move the one from the top of the mountain to the branch. And that's what happens here. Uh, and that's the else here. So now this is the next step. So we said, if the length of the mountain is greater than zero, right now, if there's nothing on the mountain, here's where we check the branch and that's what we go to right away. So now we're saying if the length of the branch is greater than zero, we say, well, if the one at the end of the branch 
is equal to the current. So the one we're looking for, we're going to add one to current again, and then we're going to remove it. And we're just going to keep checking that again, right? So we're going to keep doing this until eventually we run into the case where the one on the branch is not the one we're looking for. And in that instance, if there's nothing on the top of the mountain and there's still items on the branch and we can't move them into the lake, we're not going to be able to complete the recipe. So we simply print N and we break this while loop here like that. Now, otherwise, so here we've gone through, we said if the length of car list is greater than zero, if the length of branch is greater than zero. Now, if we make it all the way to this else statement here, that means there's nothing on the branch, there's nothing on the mountain. That means that we've successfully moved everything into the lake. So we can print yes, we can break, and we can move to the next test case. All right, so I hope that explanation was good enough for you guys. If you have any questions, again, don't be don't be scared to leave a comment down below. I'm always trying to respond to comments and help you guys out. And I'm sure if you leave a comment, someone else would be more than happy to help you out as well. And like always, if you guys want to get the code for this, um, you want to look at the problem yourself, not just from my video, you can go ahead and go to my shared Google Drive. I'm leaving a comment uh, or what am I saying? I'm leaving a link in the description down below. I have all the practice problems that I've done so far. So one, two, three, you can go ahead, click on the appropriate folder. You can see the question and then you can see the answer as well uh, with my commenting on it. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next weekly programming problem.